until she gets here. Um, she'll be here. Soon. Norton Cable is recording. If anybody else is, you just have to let us know. We'll stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so uh, minutes of the October 3rd meeting. You guys have a chance to look at them. Any questions, comments on the minutes? Nope. All right, is there a motion to approve the minutes for October 3rd? So. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the warrants. Yes, that's me. Um, I reviewed and approved the following warrants for October 3rd, 2019, $187,886.50. I wish to enter that into public record. Student rep update. So I'm going a little fast because I was told we have to be out by 7:30. Yes. So we yeah. have just for information on that, Madam Chair. <laughs> just uh, we have um, the alarm systems in this building per state review going off. We don't schedule it, so we're just told about it. And we were told today about it. So um, can I suggest that if we have to be out here by 7:30, we should we can table some any items that we need to Monday night. So should we do a quick? Go through of what's on the agenda and decide what to table till Monday night. You could do that. Um, I, I would recommend district goals, superintendent's evaluation, uh, town meeting priorities because we can discuss it then, right. mm -hmm. um, and um, the financial update. Those can all be done Monday night. So ten to okay. thirteen. Yeah. Okay. All right. so and if we can, if we get done earlier, then we can just add to. We'll the do numbers. other business other business on tail. Yeah. Yes. Right. Save it. Yeah. Right. I just <laughs> once the alarm start going off, it's just going to go on and on right. and on right. and off, and right. so we should have that every Thursday. Just okay. All right. So Cooper, you're up. Awesome. All right. Well, at that note, I'll uh, speed through these. Um, so at the high school, uh, we have the coffee house, uh, the second one of this year, uh, which is this Friday. Those are always a lot of fun. So looking forward to that. Um, everyone has uh, safely returned from the delegation trip uh, to China, and it was really cool to hear about that and see all the pictures on Twitter. Um, really cool to hear about that. Um, and the girls' volleyball had uh, senior night last night, and all the um, all teams, uh, freshmen, JV, and varsity, uh, beat Denim. Um, the Powerpuff game is uh, coming up soon. That's always a lot of fun to watch. There is a college career planning night and financial aid seminar for juniors on the 22nd, and an eighth grade open house uh, is on the 30th. Um, sophomores uh, and a few juniors uh, took the PSATs yesterday. Um, there is a STEM week next week at the high school. Um, uh, it's uh, brought by the Women in STEM Club, and they're collaborating with the uh, Yale Classroom to perform a DNA activity using uh, strawberries. Um, also, the Deaf Kids Code organization is coming for a day-long experience, and they're going to be collaborating with the uh, REITS program at the high school to learn about robots, circuits, and apps. Um, for some upcoming field trips, there's the math trip to the Fenway Park to delve into statistics, and also business department trips to the Steel Art Norwood and the Amazon Fa and the Amazon offices in Fall River. Uh, on November 5th, uh, former NHL All-Star Kevin Stevens uh, will be speaking at Norton High School about his battle with addiction, thanks to the Norton Opioid Prevention and Education and Chief Clark. And the honor societies have all accepted applications, and new members are being selected for the tapping day on November 1st as well as the induction ceremonies on November 26th. That's the high school. Woo. Okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> At the middle school, um, Dr. Sear and some of the students from Stonehill College came and visited a sixth grade classroom today and they helped with the neurobiology, so that's really cool. Uh, and also the, <clears throat> excuse me, the girls soccer team is undefeated and the boys team is also having a great season. And the first school dance of the year is next Friday on the 25th. Uh, at the Yell, um, I won't say too much, as I know that's the whole deal tonight. Even though we aren't at the Yell, which I was surprised to learn about a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, uh, at the Yell, they're uh, having a Hoop for Heart uh, Kids Heart Challenge, uh, which started this past week in uh, their health classes uh, and physical education classes with Miss Crane. Uh, they're hoping to raise um, $1,500. Uh, for this cause of the American Heart Association, and the challenge will end with a uh, students against faculty basketball game on Friday, October 25th. And my money's on the students. Uh, <laughs> uh, at the JCS, the second grade held the family fun night on the 10th, and uh, on the 10th as well, they had visitors from Kazakhstan as well to learn about the U.S. Uh, schools and teacher evaluation system. Um, then at the LGN, they had the fun run last week, and they surpassed their goal of $15,000. So that's great to hear. 
Alright, so do I have to turn it back over? Yes. Okay, so our chair Carolyn Gallagher is here, so now I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks, Cooper, for <laughs> another great update. Um, so, Mr. Gagan, we'll move on to the opening school report for the Yelp School. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, Okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, I think you might have heard a little bit about our opening at the L uh, with our building, um, but uh, the thing I wanted to just main sh make sure I talk about tonight was that uh, everything has just been incredibly smooth opening for the kids. And uh, faculty, staff have been amazing in just kind of helping and supporting and being flexible. I mean, when you have the superintendent sharing his office with the business manager, <laughs> and uh, who, who was prior with the uh, head of uh, head of maintenance, it, it just really is amazing to see what we're doing and uh, how we're able to do it um, and how to make it work. But uh, I thought, what an opening it was, and I thought a window would be perfect <laughs> to uh, uh, show uh, how we were doing. Um, but we did try. We did start to make it kind of interesting. Uh, Dr. Baeta did ask us to go outside the box uh, in our in in opening school this year, making it interesting for the kids, and it really has been something that uh, we took to heart and uh, were able to do. Uh, as I said, all the faculty and staff have been incredibly flexible in in making this work. Um, and when you, when you try to prepare for elementary school, it's big about like the classroom setup, the bulletin boards. Uh, getting everything ready and for the teachers to be able to bounce with everything that that has occurred it really is amazing um, we've been able to model positivity and be able to kind of take on everything that was kind of an issue and just make it a challenge and, and try to achieve as best as possible we've had people move classrooms two or three times just as uh, we've been able to open up new spaces and make it work so it really has been amazing and the whole time, everything has been, I mean, we put our money where our mouth is and really have made students first. And uh, as I said, when all of a sudden people are sharing offices, when all of central office is down in the PPS office in closets and, and uh, little storage offices and rooms, it really does show that we care about what the kids have for themselves and how it's supposed to be. And, uh, and I kept stressing the whole time to the faculty and staff that we are more than a building, more than just the brick and mortar that are around us. It really is about the kids, for the kids, and, and with the kids. And that's what we've really shown in these first few weeks. Um, and I just kind of had some pictures up there that have explained it. That uh, we, he, he, as a fourth grader, they didn't know the difference of what was going on, whether fifth grade is there's some fifth grade classrooms down the hall or in the same hallway with them. They didn't know the difference, and, and, and they've been working with it. Fifth grade, I think, was a little bit sad that they didn't get a chance to go up to the second floor and to the third floor yet, but they've been bouncing with it, and they've been able to share bathrooms, share hallways, uh, be a little bit cramped in the cafeteria, and it really has been something that they have been able to kind of work with and be with, and it hasn't dampened their spirits whatsoever. The, the other day, a, a fifth grade student, or excuse me, a fourth grade student came off the bus and he looked kind of sad. And I turned to him and I'm like, What's wrong? What's going on? Did something happen on the bus? And he's like, I'm just so sad that fourth grade doesn't get new windows. And I'm like, No, 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 you're getting new windows. And he was like, Oh, okay. And then he walked right in and he was fine. So I, I think that kind of speaks to where they are, what they're doing. And, and for us, it's really been kind of just our goals for the year have been continuing our PBIS, and it's something that we're doing, and it's something that we are modeling for the kids in that uh, positive behavior. And uh, it's something that we're working on. It's, uh, I, I've taken so many pictures and been able to kind of tweet them out. Uh, I just love when you see the teachers as the guide at the side. And it's really something that you can see in every single classroom. 
uh, we were able to do our kindness challenge early in the year and it's something that uh, took off and it's something that we just put in the kids hands and, and they control it and they do it and it's really been awesome to see um, also on the previous slide our, our PTO which I know is here tonight support us as they always do helping out the teachers wanting to kind of move things up that they give little like bonuses for our teachers to spend uh, throughout the year and we're moving it up for them to kind of do it this year and they're thinking about it and they want an appreciation day for kids and those are the types of things that come through with our community and uh, more pictures of like guiding at the side which I love and then to the left another kind of bonus that has happened is you have fourth and fifth grade so kind of close to one another is it's enabled teachers to work together more and have them kind of work together on projects between the fourth and fifth grade and sometimes when you go from fourth grade those two main hallways all the way up the stairs to the fifth grade it seems like not that great of a distance but when you're all of a sudden next door to one another it enables that kind of working together to happen um, and it really has been about the learning and uh, everything has been going on throughout all this and even though I kind of said when Dr. Baeta first said listen we're gonna have this issue we can start later we can do all these different things I said it doesn't matter what the classroom looks like whether it was an office or a conference room we can make it work and we can do as the uh, fugitive Tommy Lee Jones we can find whatever classroom outhouse doghouse birdhouse we can we can make it work and make it make it work for what we're trying to do um, and so that's it I've cut the other 150 slides since we're trying to make it uh, quicker but uh, it, it, it has been it's been it's been an experience uh, I told the kids and the parents the first night at open house that we try to make it a memorable school year every single year this is going to be one that's going to be memorable for them uh, that they're going to remember that they were the year that uh, the asbestos happened and uh, and they were all forced into one half of the building and but they made it work and uh, they continue to just uh, amaze me each day all That's great. just wanted to add that I mean thanks to Marty uh, for just keeping it here at all times I think it's one of the things that you know, Marty doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low, just keeps it here. And that sends a nice message to the staff, the veteran staff that have stepped up and just try to keep it. Uh, I, I think that just being positive, just mm -hmm. um, understanding, teaching them, um, as I said uh, in one of my letters home earlier this year, that our, our competencies around, you know, being respectful and accountability and, and dealing with change, even though it's a difficult, it, it's not the perfect world. Um, as of today, um, we are asbestos clean at the L school um, plus two areas that have been fully encapsulated um, and would be almost impossible to get to because it's it's like not only wrapped but then it's got like a pipe around it then it's got a wall around it it's um, so now the plan is to finish the ceilings finish the windows clean um, we're gonna ask the staff in the next couple of days maybe tomorrow to go go up there for themselves and see it so they can see how much down to the bone it really is um, and uh, get us back into the classroom in the, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Nice. So, thank you. So, Ms. Gagan, I wanted to pass along a message from Kathleen, who is not here, um, but she wanted me to share sort of publicly that somebody approached her while she was getting gas. It was a parent um, who wanted her to know how supported she felt by a conversation she had with you. Um, in regards to her child. So those are the stories that we love to hear. And I think um, as we've talked about for a long time, we're really striving towards a more sort of SEL district, right? Really thinking of the whole child, thinking of sort of including um, not just academics, but really that social emotional piece as well. And I think parents are a big part of that too. So um, what you shared about kind of positive behavior and kindness, I think certainly comes from the top. So thank you for being such a nice role model for um, us in the district, for your staff, for the children in your school. But Kathleen um, just wanted to make sure that that was sort of a message back to you. So thank you. Thank you for 
getting us through. I was lucky enough to visit the Yale um, when this first happened and to do a tour. So I know that children are in the cafeteria for a classroom and in some sort of very unusual spaces. And although you said you would make it work, I just want to also say publicly that we can make it work for the short term, right? But that isn't what we want for our ideal learning set, um, environment. So it's working for the short term, and it's kind of a nice adventure, but we want to get those children back into their classrooms. So, so I think we're going to need a crowbar to get that teacher out of that <laughs> Well, it is, it is a big surprise. She loves that space. It's a big space, that is for sure. So, um, but thank you. Thank well, you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gallagher, we just um, wanted to skip down to six through nine so that we can get the students' uh, items and then we'll come back to the parent points, okay. uh, which is a major part of tonight's meeting. So we will move to vote to approve DECA trips for 2019-20 school year. Mrs. Albritton, and um, she brought some students. Uh, this is Alice. Uh, this is Alice. <laughs> <laughs> she is our president of our DECA program, and she's going to talk about the different events that we have scheduled for this year. Yeah, so like she said, um, my name's Allison Janine. I've been here a couple times now. Um, I'm a senior, and I am the DECA president, um, so we have some really exciting stuff. Um, first up, on October 22nd, we have the Fall State Leadership Conference, um, which is just a one day trip where you go, you work on um, leadership, there is a mock role play, so practice for our upcoming competitions, and there's also an etiquette lunch, which we found very exciting last year, so we learned how to be professional. Um, super exciting, open to all members, so we do have some younger members, which is super exciting as well. Um, and then after that, November 15th to 17th, um, we have the DECA Power Trip, which is something we haven't done in a couple of years, um, but it's a two, no, sorry, three night trip in Washington, D.C., um, and it's only for officers, um, with the exception of Max Kane, who will also be joining us. Um, so it's a, an extended version of the Fall State Conference, sort of. Um, it's leadership-based, um, <coughs> working on character development, and preparing our officer team for a great year in Norton, DECA. Um, so very exciting and very fun trip for us as well, um, kind of a celebration of being on our officer team. Jennifer Skoranek, she will yep. be the chaperone for that trip. Yeah, and we love Miss Skoranek, we're going to learn a whole lot, it's going to be so fun. <laughs> um, and then after that, um, January 9th and 10th, we have our annual DECA Districts Conference. Um, so that's our first competition of the year, um, and we are planning to do very well this year. We have a whole lot of new members. Um, membership forms are not due for another week, and we already have 75 membership forms in, which is very exciting. Um, we have a lot of interest this year. So that's going to be a good one. Um, I was going to... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> if anybody is interested in being a judge for that particular conference, yes. that's all. We always struggle every yeah. year because we have about 10 schools that attend with a lot of students and having judges is very difficult, so if anybody would be able to donate their time, we would love to have you. You could just let me know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you could call the school. Yeah. Um, and so that's a one-night trip, um, so you compete on the first day, awards on the second day. Um, and then after that, qualifying members, um, so the people that place at the district conference will move on to the state conference, um, which is in late February, the 27th to 29th. Um, so that's a more elite competition, um, and hopefully we'll send a whole bunch of members. And then after that, fingers crossed, <laughs> we'll be going to Tennessee uh, this year for the International Career Development Conference, um, which is going to take place in late April into early May. Um, it's a four-night trip, and we are planning to go at least for a couple of members. We have some big winners coming up this year. So, yeah, very exciting. So, as per statute, you have to vote um, for only the out-of-state one, so recommendation is to approve um, the Washington, D.C. DECA Power Trip and the um, DECA International Career Development Conference in Nashville. Do we vote um, them separately? Or no, you can vote them as well. You can uh, vote that you're supporting the DECA trip to D.C. and uh, Nashville as, um, as provided to the students. Can we do a so moved? 
<laughs> yeah, you can do a so moved, and then you still need a second. There you go. Here you go. Second. second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're so happy to support DECA, so Thank keep up the good work them. and yeah. positive thinking. Good for you. <laughs> good luck this year. So. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. So we will vote to approve music department trip to New York City. Mrs. Brown. Hi. Hi. So this um, this is the fifth year we have requested to go on this trip. It's a day trip. We go to Broadway, and this year we are looking to see West Side Story. We're hoping to have about 50 students go. We've also opened it up to the drama club for the first time because we really want to fill that bus. Because last year we only had 37 students, so hopefully the drama kids can get us up to 50. And we leave at like 5:15 in the morning, and usually get back about 10:30. We spend a little bit of time in Times Square, we have lunch, then we go to the show, then after the show we come home and stop along the way for supper. Okay. Recommendation is to support the uh, music department's trip to New York City. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to support. We love this. <laughs> fire alarms are really Global education update and vote to approve the 2021 and 2022 tours. So I, it says Mrs. O'Neill, Mrs. Tonelli, and Dr. Kimber. Well, I certainly don't need to present with this huge crowd here tonight of um, students that have traveled and are members of our global education program at the high school and two of our fantastic advisors. So I will turn it over to Ms. Tinelli and Dr. Kiefer. Um, and we have some students that want to share with you as well. Great. So, so come join us. Come on up, everybody. There's some chairs right behind you, too, if you want them. You need them. We have a few students that wanted to share um, their experience in Italy over um, last April vacation with us. Um, so, do you want to chat? Do you want to introduce yourself? Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Yes. I'm Kayla. Hi. I'm a junior. I'm Kayla. I'm a junior. I'm Jocelyn. I'm a junior. I'm Alina. I'm a junior. I'm Brianna, and I'm a senior. <laughs> Okay, so overall, I think that we can all say that like it impacted us by like it opened our eyes to somewhere we've never been before, and just kind of like it was an opportunity that we might not have ever been able to have without it being present at the high school. Um, we gained independence, and we were able to learn about other cultures and languages. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of independence and um, responsibility of traveling by yourself with our parents. Um, so definitely. Sure. Yeah, I agree with that. That was my first trip, like ever, like on the plane. And, um, <laughs> it was very like eye opening. Yeah, and I definitely think like it made you talk to people that you would have never talked to before. Like April of last year, before we went on the trip, me and Michaela, we sat across from each other in TV video. We didn't talk a word to each other. Not once. Never. <laughs> Not once. So she was someone that I would have never talked to before, and now I consider her one of my closest friends. And I think it really allows you to form friendships and bonds that will last forever. That's great. Get some pictures of Can I touch it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a few quick pictures they put together. That's us with Mr. DeMurray. She's a chaperone. <laughs> With our whole group. <laughs> Neil, you made it. <laughs> Shocking, Miss O'Neill in pictures. Yeah, are these your pictures? Yeah, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I thought everybody else would put their pictures in, but I guess mine is for the best. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so for the next two trips, um, I guess for the more cultural experience, in 2021 we're looking to do a STEM um, tour in Panama to um, research and do water conservation and waterway conservation. Um, I thought it would be interesting to have a themed trip, um, and I know some of the science teachers were really interested in going, so I figured why not give them a shot to be a chaperone of a STEM trip. Um, and it's one of their, it's one of EF's newer tours, but they also have um, an office in Panama, so. 
um, when speaking with our consultant, she felt like this is one of the most hands-on science tours that they have because they have more connections with um, them having an office in Panama. So I figured I wanted to give our students the best opportunity to do as much um, in the field research as well as cultural experience. Um, and then in 2022, we're looking to go to Australia and New Zealand. Which has been something that students have been trying to get us to do since we started global. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, but students have been talking about Australia since we started the club, so we figured um, that it would be a big sell and also a great opportunity to get out of maybe the European type of tours that we've been doing the past couple years. And you all have the full itineraries yep. right. um, yeah. Yeah. as well. And as far as service, um, we're hoping to do Thailand in 2021 and Dominican Republic to return to the original service trip in 2022. Um, we thought that maybe having the Dominican and Panama in the same year might just cause a little bit of sort of friction because they're similar parts of the world. Um, so we wanted to kind of separate those a little bit. The service portion of the Thailand trip is an elephant sanctuary, and we felt like that would be a pretty easy sell um, with the student body, that, even the ones that can't go. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is Nora and Sam there. Um, they're seniors now. <laughs> they went on the Dominican trip as sophomores, and they're returning to yes. the Peru trip. In the spring, we have 19 students headed to Peru. And I think we have five repeat five, customers. Five, yeah, I think there's a good group. It says a lot, too. Do you guys yeah. want to talk about yeah. service? Yeah. I mean, personally, for me, I've never been to, like, a foreign country. I think I've only ever traveled, like, to Florida. And then, like, when I heard about the Dominican, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> wow. Like, I, I take French. Like, this is going to be great. Um, and then, <laughs> and then um, talking to Dr. Kiefer about it, like, I didn't know him. Like, I knew of him. I knew he was a doctor. Um, <laughs> I kind of just walked into his office one day and was like, so this Dominican trip, and from then on it was kind of like, this is where we're going. And I think I kind of took, I think every single one of us took something different with it. Like Sam and I kind of had a similar experience because we're similar. But I got like the impact that it had on me. Like I'm going to start getting emotional because I just, like the connections we formed with the girls at the school which is like some like the most like pure and like most beautiful connections you could ever form with someone. And it's just that kind of like pure like total acceptance that they gave us. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with everything she just said. It's really an amazing experience because you're not only impacting yourself, you're impacting other people. And especially for it to be young girls, it's very like powerful. powerful. And like we did a lot with like kind of not like promoting but kind of just like letting them know like this is what we do and like this is what we don't do because you have like this beautiful brain that allows you to go on to like other schools like I think some of the girls like older girls like were going to like Switzerland for like college and like they were like oh I wish I could do that and then I'd be like why can't you and they'd be like oh because I don't have enough money I'm like but you have this like it's just that it was kind of like personal connections that like not only were we empowering them, they were empowering us back without even knowing it. Yeah. Um, I also went on the Spain and Portugal trip, which was the very first trip that we did um, with EF. And then I think it was very different from the service trip, but overall I think both of them were very powerful to not only me, but everyone. Mm -hmm. I think Dr. Keeper can also speak on the memories that we made mm -hmm. with our uh, bungalows being right next to each other and having him run in with pots and pans to kill a spider that he didn't end up killing, that he didn't end up killing much to my dismay. But I, like, I just think it's so funny because I've never had Dr. Kiefer as a teacher and I had missed him as a teacher who also was our other chaperone. And like we always said like throughout the week that we were there, like they were our parents. Yeah. Like they were there, like Miss M did surgery on us a couple of times. And when we had like cuts and bruises, like she was our mom. And like Dr. Kiefer, like, was just always there and being like, yeah. let's have like these life talks. Like we were playing dominoes one night. Then he'd be like, so Nora, tell me. And I'm just like, oh my god, like I'm in a therapy session. <laughs> But it's like, it's so funny because now Dr. Kiefer is writing my letter of recommendation yeah, for college, and yeah, both of ours. And it's like, we never even had him as one of the, our teachers, but like, 
I think Sam and I can both say that like that trip allowed us to like become yeah. closer, not only as like teacher and student, also, as friends. I I think you're doing the same thing. We're both reading our college essays on this trip. Oh, yeah, yes, we are. Right. Yeah, I made Miss Fake Cry. <laughs> I mean, that is the goal. That is the goal. But, like, it's like we're more like now, like, friends than we are, like, colleagues, I guess you could say, because we are graduating. I mean, like, we're going to be colleagues. Really. <laughs> So the rank of folk first of all, thank you for being exemplary students um, and, and really being some of the first to go on these trips because as you remember, um, we hadn't done it for over a decade. Um, you know, it had been an issue and we put it together and application and all that. So thank you for being great leaders and showing the way for the school committee to recognize that this is something that's worthwhile uh, for students in Norton to consider. Um, so we have a recommendation for the four, as noted, and the central office is recommending um, you consider voting positively to support these four trips. Separately or together? No, you can put them together. And okay. Joe and I already know which ones we want to go on. <laughs> I want to go You're on the one. Them. I think before we vote, I just want to say it, it really is, you know, we sit here and we vote on these things, and it's always nice when you guys come back and tell us about your experience, because sometimes you know, we vote on it and say, oh, have a great trip. Yeah. But to hear, you know, how this affects you guys is, is really pretty powerful for us to sit here and listen to. And I think that, you know, you guys are, you're still young. And so for you guys to experience going outside of our country yeah. and do things like this is amazing, and your parents. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, I have a sophomore now and I can't imagine letting my kid go on a plane by himself. I mean, so it's, it's, it's great to hear the feedback. And, and it's cultural too, because as you know, I just came back from, from a professional trip and, and you know, we're, host, we're gonna be hosting somewhere between 15 and 20, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh graders in the winter, right. where you have a culture that just sends them with five adults Amazing. to live in, in other people's homes for two weeks. And yeah. you know, it, it's just different for us. Mm -hmm. um, but it's great to know that our kids are interested in doing this. And as you can yeah. see, yeah. Um, they are 19 going to Peru in the spring is, is a good number. Yeah. How many do um, we have for? Um, oh, 15 for Paris and Barcelona. Yeah. Um, we have a couple of repeats as well. That's um, great. Which is nice. so, and this is fully funded by families. Okay. One quick question, are the, are the trips like concurrent, like are they both on April vacation or is one in the summer? No, they're both going to be on school va school vacations but different school vacations. So it would be February and April of both years. Okay. Yeah. So if a student chose to do both and Absolutely. their parents bankrolled it, yeah. they could. <laughs> you invite them to come on? Oh. No, I'll, 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 she's not volunteering. I'm just saying yeah. if there's interest, I just want to clarify yeah. that for people. Yeah. We also looked at uh, rainy seasons to yeah. try to avoid for the countries that are affected by rainy seasons yeah. to try to stagger it. That's what happened when I went yeah. at 16 to Scotland. It rained. Oh, yeah. every, it was cold, oh. wet rain every day. Yeah, we were there after like the rainy season. I remember that now. I just remember it. Cause, like they have like their beds. We took like tour throughout the town just like to see and like walk through the community. And like their beds and like in some houses were like raised on cinder blocks. Mm -hmm. And like it was just such a culture shock. I remember crying and Dr. Kiefer being like, Oh my God! Like, what's going on? <laughs> like I'm just sitting there crying because like it's just such a cultural cultural shock, yeah. and it like just I know you like when we say like it was amazing and everything, but like it really brought me back to my reality, being like, wow, I'm fortunate enough to drive a car. I'm fortunate enough to like have a uh, chance to go to college. I'm fortunate enough to like have a school that allows this. I mean, it's a great lesson. Mm -hmm. It is. And so for the two. Trips into the Pacific, they're going to miss school. Is that right? Um, I have to miss a day. Or two. It, it, it overlaps. It 12, I think they're 10 12 days, days right? or 12 yeah. days. I know ours overlaps the two days back. Most of the trips. Yeah. Yeah. Most yeah. of the trips, um, February. Don't get me wrong, I have five. No, no. Yeah, they do over, almost every trip that's going to go that far is going to overlap, but between one and three days. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this was like four days, right? It's yeah. 12. Yeah, that's really good. Because you have the yeah, flight. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's the. Again, I'm, I'm fine with it. I was just right. curious. So we typically try to leave like on a Thursday. So you admit like a Thursday, Friday, and maybe like the following Monday or somewhere around there. Just and to students are responsible for all their work that they yeah. missed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's an yeah, excused absence. And I, um, I mean, I think <laughs> Sorry, it's wrong. just like <laughs> very nice that Norton has demonstrated that the children in Norton really such. Um, 
a desire to learn and such kindness. And I think that that's really what we're trying to promote, that um, there hasn't been a problem. Of course, when you came to us a few years ago, you know, everybody kind of wonders how will our students react. And they've been nothing but positive and wonderful role models for everybody. So. We're really lucky in our and I town. And I think the advisors do a really nice job. Yeah. Um, the two that so are here today, you. and then uh, Ms. Burkett and Mrs. Mahoney that are also advisors as well, they really put a lot of thought into the application mm -hmm. process. And students take that seriously. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we tell students that we have we have expectations of your behavior right. when, they, when you're traveling. They the and, and they meet the expectation. And we also have an application process for chaperones. And the sh people who are interested in traveling take that piece seriously as well. So, so. Well, thank so you for everything you do. So I think we have to vote to approve um, the global education trips for 2021 and 2022. So do I have a motion yeah. to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Well, have fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. So, from the parent organization. So, uh, to the parent. Oh, sorry. Yes. Are we going to the bowling today? I'm sorry? Are we going to the bowling today? Yes. Because okay. okay. I have a decent amount of money, actually. Okay. So, do we want to? You can bring them all up. You can do them right now if you want. That's fine. Well, if you want to do, because parents can. Yeah. Well, we're under we're under a mandate by the Commonwealth to get this fully voted. Um, okay. So. Um, all right. I'm um, happy to. I'm, if we can go through it, and then well, it's got to be a long discussion. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm now being told that we have an updated one. Yes. You know what we got. Yeah. So why don't we have them present? And I'm going to kind of skim through this real quick and okay. make sure that what I'm looking at is still in the new. Okay. New one. Thanks. So to our parent organizations, thank you for coming. Um, so we will invite you by school. Uh, total together, they can come up. With All them. together. All so together. come join us. Um, I There's think that behind you too. a conversation happened um, historic or sort of previously. Every school parent organization <coughs> had sort of a liaison from the school committee. Um, and what we discovered is that we were really challenged by the amount of meetings that we went to. Finance Committee, um, Board of Selectmen, of course, our meetings and others. So we were hoping to um, receive updates. We would love to, and Kathleen, who is our chairperson, is not here this evening and she apologizes for not being able to be here. Um, she will sort of be our liaison in regards to coming to meetings. So she did ask if we could get a, a, um, a schedule of when your meetings are, and she'll try to go to um, at least sort of one every so often so that she visits every school. So if you could get that to us. But please introduce yourselves. Thank you for coming. I'm Danielle Goulet. I am with the JCS Salmonese Parent Organization. I've been on the board for a couple of years, and um, so. <laughs> we're working on, um, currently we have a request for funding um, some rugs for the schools to replace for the teachers. That's one of the things that's come up so far this year. We um, do lots of activities throughout the year for some for the community, some as well um, for the staff. We do appreciations. We have Booster Thon fundraiser, which is our biggest fundraiser. We just had a fall festival and that went well. Um, that's pretty much a lot of some of the things we do. Thanks, Danielle. Um, Linda Whiteside. I'm the treasurer of the high school um, parent board. I've pretty much been the treasurer on every parent board <laughs> at, at all the schools as my kids have kind of come up. But um, the school year is off to a good start. We have right now our first um, and only fundraiser for the year is underway. It's just a direct donation. We sent out letters to all the parents and um, donations are coming in, which is great. Um, we just put out a request to teachers for anything that they needed and we approved last night at our meeting $750 worth of fund requests for the teachers and the school nurse. And um, there was a college fair um, a week or so ago at the high school and we sponsored the breakfast for all the reps that came in for the college. And then the one big thing that happens at the, the school is of course the grad night for all the seniors when they graduate. And, that's already in the works, even though graduation is a little ways off, but it's it's a huge party and it's a lot of work. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.
Hi, I'm Jill Goldstein, and I'm one of the <coughs> co-chairs at the Yale uh, for the uh, PTO there. Um, and what we're working on right now, um, as Mr. Gagan had said, is um, getting some of the teacher stipends that we usually do in the spring. We're going to kind of push them up and do them, um, I think, within the next month, just to give the teachers um, some extra funds to, you know, purchase what they need for the classrooms and what they've lost because of the asbestos. Um, another thing, uh, recently we had to cancel our trunk or treat event. Um, basically, it came down to lack of, you know, parental volunteers. Um, we didn't have really anyone other than the board that was willing to kind of step up, which is kind of sad. Um, but we are moving on and we are thinking of um, other things to do um, during the year. Um, we have some f um, family fun events um, going to Altitude and Attleboro um, and Providence Bruins games. And um, <coughs> right now we're also trying to start um, looking into the fifth grade yearbook um, and maybe organize a yearbook club that the fifth graders can be a part of instead of scrambling at the end of the year for pictures and stuff starting now and let the fifth graders, you know, experience that kind of club and, um, you know, get the pictures and make, make more friends and have a good time. And uh, that's about it right now. Thank you. I'm Sky Lawler. I'm the president of the LG Norris Parent Teacher Connection. Um, as Mr. Smith had said earlier, we just finished our fun run last Friday. Um, we raised, well, our goal was $15,000. So um, Mrs. Luke, our principal, and Mr. Joe, our new custodian, dressed up as Jack Skellington and Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas and surprised the kids at pick up and drop off and lunch. Kids loved it. Um, we also promised them if they uh, reached over $20,000, we'd have another surprise for them. We don't want to ruin it. Um, but we're going to hopefully do that in the next couple of weeks, weather permitting. Uh, look on Facebook and Twitter, <laughs> and you'll see. Uh, we also have a few other um, family fun nights, community events coming up. We are November 15th. We have Altitude. Um, we have a holiday shop from December 2nd to December 6th, uh, Breakfast with Santa on the 7th of December, a movie night on the 1st of January, Winter Carnival. It sounds early, but it's still actually the same weekend, it's, but it's a leap year. <laughs> so it's February 29th, um, which we hope that we'll still have on that day and not have a snow day or a hurricane um, like we have the last couple of years. Um, and then we were actually, with the money that we raised last year, we were able to purchase and complete our rug program for the meeting rugs for the classroom. We were able to purchase the last 10 of the 13. Uh, we also purchased uh, 10, uh, sorry, <laughs> 10 commercial tables for the school. So we were able to throw out the ones that were, I think, like 20 years old. Uh, so we have brand new tables for them. We've also been able to approve the third grade field trip to Plymouth Plantation, which happens tomorrow, and a first grade field trip to Oak Knoll uh, Sanctuary, I think it's in Attleboro. And um, we've also filed our taxes, being a 501c3. We were able to file our taxes already, so we're really excited that that got done. And, uh, <laughs> it's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Melanie. <laughs> I'm huge. Melanie, that was perfect. Making a grand entrance. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. Our uh, Northfield School Carver Beauty is actually downstairs right now. So I literally ran. I can't breathe. Um, Do you want to take go. a break? <laughs> <laughs> um, we were just asking for a quick little update and sort of how things are going. And if you yes. want a break. No, I'm good. OK. Fantastic. OK, so the short answer is we're just getting started. Um, we're issuing our fundraiser showing tomorrow. And basically, it's pretty straightforward. We're asking parents to give a donation so that we can give, sorry, I can't read. Um, <laughs> uh, grant opportunities to teachers, scholarships and donations for kids for field trips 
etc. And then um, really just bring enrichment opportunities into the school. That's kind of our big focus that we like to do. Um, fundraisers a little outside the box this year. We've asked teachers things they'd be willing to do if their kids hit certain limits. So we're not having any fundraiser, we're having any fundraiser. Um, that's probably the most exciting thing we've got going on right now. Mm -hmm. Other than we're just approving uh, various emerging I mean, opportunities so. coming into the school. No, that's so. I mean, I think that I can probably speak um, on behalf of being a, an involved parent. So, standing where you are right now for many years as the um, chairperson at JCS, and then for a short time here at the middle school. Um, and at the Yale, so thank you because I know how hard you work. Um, there's so much that happens behind the scenes that nobody really understands. Um, even writing emails and creating sort of updates and posting on Facebook and doing all of your nonprofit things um, really takes a lot of time and energy, so thank you. And I did see on um, Twitter or Facebook, I'm not sure which one, that you had to cancel the trunk retreat, which has always been a really sort of um, successful, fun, amazing event. So I think that we are all so busy, and I think it's just hard for everybody to mm -hmm. always step up. But if we are out there, have parents listening, it's so important to just be part of um, your school community and, and to really offer your children the opportunity for all of those enrichment opportunities. So I hope that you know people watching will come out and volunteer, but thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot, we really appreciate it. I think um, Kathleen was just really hoping that although you may not see us regularly at your meetings, and I always, um, while I've sat on this board, was the liaison to the middle school and could never get to your meetings because they were always downstairs while I was upstairs. Um, so I never was able to participate. But of course, we are available by email and um, certainly would be more than happy to continue to support our schools. So let us know. I don't know if anybody else has any comments. No, just uh, thank just you guys. And I know a lot of parents donate their money, which is great, and we use it. But it also takes a lot to spend the time to use that money, I guess. And some of the things are not like things you do during the day. Like at the school, you can do it from your own home. Mm -hmm. So just something to think about. Well, and I know JCS is probably getting ready for their float. I don't know if the LG yes. is also marching in the parade this year as well. But yes, yeah. those are huge undertakings yes. um, that really are so much fun just to get to know people, get to know sort of your school community. So, and I, I'm still, I see it, I don't have children in um, the lower schools anymore, but I still am part of your sort of social media, so I get all of these updates and it's sort of a little nostalgic. So, great job, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, all. Thank you all. We really appreciate you coming out tonight. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so we will move to vote to approve updates to the NPS Bullying Prevention and Intervention Plan. So um, we're required to look at our Bullying Prevention and Intervention Plan every two years. Um, and we did that this summer. Um, and basically what we did was we compared our plan to the model plan put out by the state. Um, so we removed some language that was really um, really directions for us that should never have been there in the first place. So we cleaned that up a little bit um, and then um, just made a few updates that I can share with you. Um, I'll share the highlights of them anyways. Um, so the front page, obviously we updated all the people. Um, on page seven, we updated um, section A to include PBIS training that we've done for staff on trauma-sensitive schools work of the counselors, um, really reflecting what we're, we're doing now. Um, on page 14, again, we updated um, to reflect what we're doing now, and we had something in there about a Saturday skill development camp that we never did, so I'm not sure how we had that there in the first place. Um, down at the bottom of that page, section F, um, we added in a process for investigating accusations of bullying um, from school staff to students um, that was missing in our um, previous plan. Um, on page 17, 
we added in um, the process for problem resolution through the Department of Education. Um, and that, again, should have been there and was missing from our previous plan. Um, and we also um, made some minor updates to the language and some of the definitions. And then um, we also, um, people over time have updated our forms to make them a little bit more user friendly for us as a staff. Um, and so we updated the forms that are here um, for each process of, um, between reporting and investigating um, and all of that. And then we also went through our list of therapeutic resources and um, called or verified that they were still in existence and that they were still um, practicing. Um, so that's completely up to date as well. So those were the minor things. I see all your sticky notes over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jean's bracing herself. Yeah. Right, can, so I, can I ask a oh, second? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I thought I was going to like bite in the ass. Who cares? About this? <laughs> no, no, no. I, my question isn't necessarily. I was just wondering in any of this information, I mean, I read it, and um, is there a definition of sort of what is perceived to be bullying? Sort of different than just being mean, right? Um, it's ongoing, persistent, it happens more than once. Okay. Um, it's actually at the bottom of page 17. It's talking about it. Okay. Um, so it's in the it's at the at the back are all of the definitions and bullying is actually defined not by Norton but it's right de defined by law. Um, so it talks about repeated use by one or more students or a member of school staff of written, verbal, or electronic expression or physical act. So it's it's really about that repeated, mm -hmm. ongoing, targeted behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's like the important word that I think when we're sort of thinking about this, it's that word repeated, that it's different than sort of those one time or two time mm -hmm. incidents. Correct. And, and the process that we have as a staff to go through and determine if a situation is bullying or not um, is all in that packet as well. The forms, you can see the flow chart that the principals mm -hmm. and the assistant principals follow when they go through the process to determine if an incident can be considered bullying. And it lays out all of those things, um, and it's somewhat it's quite a flow chart. I have it to is a it. very yeah, aggressive like, flow chart. Uh, it, it is a little aggressive. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of little. There's a lot of arrows. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of arrows. So you and I are very familiar with it uh -huh. at this um, point. <laughs> so it certainly isn't an easy process by any means. It's also important to recognize that the determination is made by the principal, mm -hmm. not the superintendent, and not the school committee, and it's not appealable. It's the only law that doesn't allow for it to be appealed to the superintendent of schools. And it's also binding that it stays with the student until they graduate from the system, if they're in fact it's the only discipline report that follows you from school to school. Um, so when you look at the process, really it becomes that <coughs> If they don't like our determination, they go into DESE with it. Um, so a parent can, and that's the section that was added here, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. if the parents don't like the decision, they can then appeal. Uh, in most cases, what happens with schools like us and others is that um, someone will use comments like, or phrases like, well, I don't think that was bullying. Well, that's a process. You can't, you know, you, you may not, you may think that a student is not age appropriate, but you still have to go through the process of the reporting. Um, and, the, and investigation, cross-examination, so on and so forth, before you can make that determination. Now, do we have numbers on the, the amount of determinations we file, made? Yeah, we have to file every single year. Um, I don't have them with me, but I can share that with you if you'd like. We have to file um, all reports, and then were they or weren't they? Mm -hmm. Was there a finding or wasn't there a finding? Now, it, sorry. I know Dennis is chomping at the bit. No, he just, he just, I uh, just maybe notice another, another thing missing here. That's. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Joe. We are going to run out of time, by the way. So well, you got to be care, you got to be careful about what's in front of you because this is pretty much a boilerplate <coughs> from the state, except for names right. and programs. All right. Some of the stuff, so, is, some of the stuff is typo, but but some of it's yeah. legitimate, like questions. Yeah. And, and we can take the questions tonight and come back for the next meeting mm -hmm. to take the final vote. All right. That's well, not a problem either. You, you have the floor right now. I lost my train of thought, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, your, your, your stickies mess with my vision. 
So I'll, I'm just going to go through these yep. really quickly. Um, on page five, first of all, while we're, while we're on page five, uh, about three quarters of the way down, we recognize that certain second line of that, there's a, a typo, perceived characteristic should be two words. Yeah. It's, it's lumped into one. Um, up at the top of the page, or close to the top of the page, yeah. biannual updating, biannual or more frequently, seems like a lot to me. Twice a year or more. Yeah, is a lot of updating. Is that is that state statute we, or whatever? We it's total total boilerplate that we can be asked. I mean, that seems point. crazy. We ha it is. It and, is. And, I'm, and I'm as anti-bullying as you can get, but that I, I don't see how we can legitimately keep up with that. That's well, our student, our our Jean, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when it comes I'm to sorry, it's not. It's every two years. It's not twice it says, a year. It says by so anyway, though. I wrote it wrong. On what page? Every two years. Eight so hours. top of however, so that you're. So we so should say biannually, not biannually. Right. That's one. But two, be, be mindful that bullying reports are reported regularly. No, that's fine. But this is saying that we have to review and update the our plan. Policy. The plan. And the plan does yeah. need to be reviewed. Yeah. What it statute. says now is twice, twice gotcha. a year or more. Yes. So it should be biannually, yes. not biannually. Yes. Yep. All right. That's that. Uh, at least makes way more sense. Yep. Um, on page 10, uh, and while we're on page 10, I got to tell you, I, I, a, a compliment, I went to one of the websites today just to see like, oh, how easy is it to find the forms, and it's actually super easy to find the forms online. So, um, so kudos to you guys. There's also, uh, just so that you know too, I appreciate you saying that, but there's also the Let's Talk. Yeah, well, there's plenty of other ways. Also, I'm just, I, I was just at work. I'm like, let me try and see how it is. And it, yeah. it was like, click, click, you know, there. Right. So, so the forms are there, but this also the needs to be there. So yeah. once it's voted on, we're going to Yeah, I was looking at the forms because yes. it's just, because yeah. it said you can find the yeah. forms online. Um, reporting by staff, uh, I, the, my only issue with this was that it says, here's what you need to do, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't say if you don't report it, if you're, if you're a staff member and you see something and don't report it, what happens? Must report it. If not, it's some some type of disciplinary issue. What have you? I don't believe it's. I don't want to. Yes, I'll get back to you with that. But I I have. Right. I think I have the answer to that. But All right. Let me look into it. So first. next page, page eleven. This is more like kind of a um, flowy thematical type of thing. Um, the notice to parents or guardians. It it comes in here before we actually have um, determined that it's bullying. It does say upon determining that bullying or retaliation has occurred. You're going to notify people. I think you should move that to after the the part where the bullying becomes determined. It just it doesn't it doesn't flow right. You, you actually have to let the parent know prior to your investigation that a claim has been made. Okay, then that's not what this says. Target or the or the aggressor. And that's not what this says. It says yeah. upon determining that bullying or retaliation has occurred, and it actually goes on later in it to say the determination will be made yes. by so and so. So so then that that's miss. Misstated. Yeah, because right at the end of that sentence it says a target or aggressor. So right. you almost have to strike that first sentence. Right. Yeah, and, and Gene and I will double check the model language. I believe we'll make it work. All right. Um, I'm gonna skip that one actually. So uh, the, the one thing that Joe made me think of actually, because Joe, you said something about it's the principal that makes the determination, and that is true in most cases. But actually, there is there is a case where I'm curious about that. Because one of the cases that they presented here is, what if it is actually you? And I'm not saying you would ever do it, but the superintendent is a staff member, and it and it does get mentioned in here as, as this is a, a potential person who could be bullying. Right. So we don't address who actually determines in that case whether it's bullying or not. It's the principal of the building, mm -hmm. but if it's if it's front office administration, we don't have an actual methodology to who, who does it then? Who's the you know what? I've never read it in a, in a bullying report, so I'd have to ask that question. I, right. We'd have to go to Desi with that because I don't know what they call for protocol for a central office administrator being accused of bullying. Okay. I'm just kidding. No, it's a great question. I, 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 it's not in the model language that I can right. remember. Um, in yeah, the not just a great face, folks. No. Um, <laughs> 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 it's it's on Desi. Time this week and that's, that's all I had. I had one other thing, but it's, it's more of a, a um, so Just so the committee knows as well, um, the Department of Education has to approve any changes we make. So we went through, we made all the changes based on their model form, and now we bring it to you as the last stop. So any changes that we make here would have to go back to the department and then back to the committee. 
that, that's just their process for updating these plans. Um, so they review them and then they correct. determine if anything that you have included is the gentleman not. who reviewed it was almost as thorough as Dines because I think he sent it back to Gene and I. You know what? Uh, thank you. I take at, least, at least. <laughs> so we'll take a look into some of those issues. Okay. So thank you. And, and, and we're not stopped from making our standards. That's good. And we're, and Dines, we're not we're not stopped from making our standards and more and higher than the states. The states is a minimal state. Right. And I'm and I'm fine with that as well. I, I actually think it's a pretty good policy to be honest with you. Um, just some of the stuff was just literally wording and, and just a couple of, uh, I don't know, not policy, but it just that would give it a little more weight, a little more gravitas and something. We'll like ask that. the questions and get back to the We'll ask them about how to best address the questions that you have. Okay. So one, one last question. Um, when it comes to filling out the forms, is that something that the the person filling out the form has to put their name to, or is it anonymous? No, it can be or anonymous. It can be, anonymous. It can be either or. Okay. It can be anonymous. It can be, uh, as a matter of fact, a number of them in the last couple of years have, have, have come anonymously mm -hmm. um, to our Let's Talk process, the Let's Talk on the district site. Um, How many do we get? And that um, um, definitely less than 10. I'd, I'd say probably even less than five in some cases because. I mean, we've had very few determinations in the time that I've been here. <clears throat> But to a lot of the issue comes down to everybody has an interpretation of what's going right. on. Yeah, the same. Yeah. You can't tell an ongoing definition. And there's, there's different concepts yeah. of that in this room. Right. So the principal has to go through that process or that doesn't mean um, and make a conclusion um, and have a rationale for their, for their conclusion. Most often, the, the, the idea that it happens often, um, that it's, it's, a, it's a controlling um, relationship, if you will. Um, are the, the things that we uh, are looking for. Um, age is somewhat irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And the important piece for us as a district is that we're following the process that we've set forth within our plan. So if a parent is not unhappy with the determination, they can go to the department. But the department will really look at, did you follow the process that is laid out in your plan? And should you do that with fidelity? Now, is there anything if, I guess, if we don't follow our written policy and Desi discovers that, what is the... Uh, then you yes. go... Yes. Yes, okay. there is. <laughs> yes, and that can happen, to be quite honest, regularly. Anyway. Um, and then that's when we get investigated as a district or asked about who's trained, how they're trained, why they're trained, how often they're trained, um, or asked uh, things like this. You need to update your plan. Um, we can have an appeal that goes to Desi. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they didn't like the determination, the parent has the right to that hearing, that we have to provide DESI with the information that we utilize, and then DESI can make. Typically, it's the process, not the decision. They're not a court of law. Um, but they can say, well, you didn't use this in your process, and that's why you, you came to maybe, maybe you would have come to a different determination. Okay. Any other questions? So it looks like it's 7.30. We will adjourn our meeting for tonight, and we will um, motion for. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.